Hey guys, Trouble Cat here recording for the Zombie Arcade, and today I'm doing a live commentary, again, of, uh, of my Battlefield 3 Meet the Weapon series. And today we're looking at the M4A1. I'm rocking this in sort of a, uh, well, actually, you should recognize this set out, set up, from my M416 flanker video. We got a holographic sight, a foregrip, and a suppressor. And, uh, unsurprisingly, this is a setup I also greatly enjoy on the M4. I'm actually going to switch to a suppressed M9. Um, for, for more or less the same reasons, this is just a, uh, a good sort of effective setup for getting around behind dudes and teaching them lessons. Teaching them so many lessons. And, uh, putting some conquest on Karg Island, it looks like. Be joining this Bravo squad. Proceeding from the U.S. to Columbia Cap Objectives. Now, I have a really bad feeling about this because I was in this server last game and I was on the other team. And, uh... This side that I just got auto balance to is getting horrendously, horrendously fucked up. So, uh, likely this is going to be another one of those ridiculously fucking one-sided games that I have a, uh, a tendency to be engaged in. In fact, it looks like we've already lost a few tickets somehow. Despite capping point before them. Whatever. Doesn't even matter. Because I will attempt to find victory no matter what. So, yeah, um... As I talked about in my M416 video, and I mean, this loadout is a little bit less strong at range than that because we're using uh, the M4. It's not as strong at range as the M416. But uh, as I talked about, you really want to be using this as sort of a flanking setup. I often like to run this setup with an ACOG scope, actually, but I figure I used an ACOG in my last Meet the Weapon video, so I'll, uh, I'll set up the hollow sight on here instead this time. Might even, uh, might even iron sights. I haven't actually shown the loadouts where I just use iron sights as of yet, although, um, there will be some for the A91, probably the G36C, but, uh, you can use any, any close range of optics with this, with this loadout, of course, or, uh, as I said, I do quite like the ACOG scope on it, so what I was rocking in beta a lot, actually, was this, uh, this weapon setup with an ACOG, just cause I kinda liked the way it looked for the most part. That's sort of a really, uh, a really typical setup for the carbines is an ACOG, a foregrip, and a suppressor. You see that one a lot on pretty much any any old carbine you can't think of. That will use the hollow sets. Lost the offices. He's got the construction site. What I really want to do is get over to the offices, but construction site will also do. Take Charlie. Sorry about the lack of a uh, Meet the Weapon video yesterday. I was uh, trying to figure out a different recording setup that was going to produce some uh, some nicer quality. I mean, I, I know the quality is already quite good, but I thought I might be able to get it even better because Exploit released a new version. They improved their game source feature, and uh, yeah, I was trying to find something that might look even sexier, but that was proving uh, difficult. I found one set that kind of worked actually, but then I uh, I was screwing around with things trying to get it even more ideal, and I actually can't remember what objective. those settings were. Anyway, I'm, I'm back to recording how it was previously, which is perhaps at, uh, playing at 1920 by- OH SHIT! Recording at, uh, at half size. Which tends to come out quite well. Oh no. OH NO! Okay. Oh, good. Now I can just avoid getting murdered by a tank. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in this building here and get upstairs and hope they don't uh, see me here, here. They they saw me there. I uh oh they just there were two tanks there. I see. I thought there was only that one in the other yard, and so I wasn't uh, I wasn't too worried about trying to get up in that building. But I really should have been. I I really really should have been worried about that. Might actually switch to to stingers. And again, it's their tanks that are fucking us up for the most part. Capping these points and such. Uh, I normally don't run the Stinger. Obviously, the best launcher by far for engineers is the Javelin if you've got someone with a soft lamb. If you don't have a buddy in your squad who you can communicate with easily using a soft lamb, then, uh, then you're really going to want a small or an RPG instead of the Javelin. Because it takes too long to lock on and it doesn't do enough damage and you only get a few rockets. Javelin is really only worth using if you've got that soft one, in my experience. Just to just to talk a little bit more generally about playing the kit and the weapons there. And oh, hey, buddy! Apparently, I 
Okay, I'm not gonna be able to hit you right now. Suppress control assist. Oh! Gee! Holy shit! I don't even. Whoa! Scared the hell out of me! Jumped like three feet in the air. I haven't even finished my coffee yet, and I'm already on the edge of my seat. Hey, tank buddy, what's up? I heard you like. I heard you like rockets into your side panels. No, you're going too fast for that shit. Tried to lead him, but not far enough. Oh, hey. Hey, bro, what's up? Everywhere I go, there's a dozen tanks. But that's okay. I'm an engineer, and it's my job to encounter a dozen tanks wherever I go. And not get a single fuck as I do. Oh, no. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use this game, no matter what I end up doing. Um, because it's, it's when you decide to do a live comm, it really is not cool if you... Oh, there's two guys there. I see. It really is not cool if you end up having to do the same thing like 700 times. Hold it to be on it. Wow. Colonel Service Star 15. That guy... That guy has the many, the many ranks. I'm chilling at uh, Colonel Service Star 8. If you guys are wondering. Which is higher than the vast majority of people I see, but then sometimes... You do encounter... The massive nerds, of which I am one, but but of a different variety. You know, I don't spend all day training to become the greatest of all Battlefield 3 players. Mostly, uh, I, I have no life on account of. I mean, I, I spend time, you know, working on my website and shit. It's it's all extreme massive nerd zone, but slightly different, S slightly different type of massive nerddom. One might argue that mine is slightly more productive, but that's not important. I'm not actually seeking to demean these people by calling them massive nerds. To be honest, I consider it a badge of honor. Defend this objective. I don't see any bad dudes. But uh, I'm forced to assume that there are, in fact, a million bad dudes just waiting to leap out at me. Because everywhere I go, there's a million bad dudes waiting to leap out at me. It's kind of an artifact of being on the losing team and having so little map control, you know? Wherever you go, bad dudes are waiting. Tank is coming to fuck my day up. The tank is currently in the process of fucking my day up. No. Get inside here. Oh no, you don't you don't want to be on that rooftop. Tangy fruits. That tank is so mad, I can't even believe how mad it is. I'm just gonna try and keep in cover at the moment. I could engage it with my small, but you really want to uh you really want to be ambushing the tanks when you do that, and uh, that guy just kind of ran up behind me with a pistol and shot me. I wasn't really expecting that. You really want to be ambushing the tanks when you engage them with a small RPG. If they are shooting at you already, and then you start trying to fight them, you are going to die. You are you are not even going to die a little bit. You are going to be so fucking dead, I can't even believe how dead you will be. And what is this guy doing here? You're facing the wrong way, bro. The enemies are going to be, going to be coming from the direction where their points are. Oh, maybe he was just waiting for me to spawn. That's a pretty cool dude, actually. Yeah, it looks like he was just waiting for his, uh, his squad buddies to get back in the fight. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty okay. Okay with that. Team-oriented shit, I guess. Oh, looks like there's an unoccupied tank down by the water here. Or possibly underwater. Yeah. Okay. That guy mastered the art of driving a tank. Oh, shit. Sniper rounds hitting me. Attack helicopters overhead. What do I do? Where can I go? How can I be safe? Where am I being shot from? I don't understand. Oh, there. What? How the? Where did you? Where did you even come from? I thought my squad was up there with me, but I guess not. And that dude. That dude just knew. See, it may seem like I'm doing abysmally poorly, but I am coming, uh... You know, I'm ahead of 10 people on my team. I'm coming 6 out of uh, 15, I guess. I tend to find it's more useful to um, to compare yourself to the rest of your team as opposed to the entire server because of how much harder it is to be successful on a losing team. You know, if you're comparing yourself to the entire server and you're constantly in one side of games where your team is getting fucked up, you're probably going to think you're much worse than you actually are. Because uh, you you tend to do a lot better when you're on a winning team. At least I know I do. I mean, sometimes you'll be doing really well on a losing team. You can you can pull that off occasionally. A lot, some people pull it off consistently. Who are who are significantly better players than me. Oh, I need to move. That sound was the building falling down. 
I see. I uh, I didn't realize that sound was the building falling down. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have stayed there. See, I mean, this game would absolutely definitely go into a chicken pole if I wasn't doing a live commentary, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use this because I don't know. Last time, last time I uh, spent days trying to get a good live commentary, I, I ended up raging really hard. I don't know if you guys remember that. Probably do. May not have been the the most amazing show of this weapon's amazing potential, but hey, whatever. Right, we, need to get, we, we could, in theory, if we captured all four of these points, we could still make a comeback. If that's not going to happen, but but I mean, you know, there there's always hope and stuff. I, I guess is what I'm saying. Ow, son of sniper, where are you? Dodging and shit. He's uh he's up on those hills. He's just chilling, chilling, feeling no remorse. Probably not actually, and then sniped by a tank that hit me. That was a tank shot in my head. From pretty uh good range as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he tanks not me like a boss. There is absolutely nowhere I can go to live. I'm be uh, fighting these tanks, but I keep being in not a. Oh, that's where I'm sorry, I thought he had moved. I I was confused. I didn't know what it was, and then I got hit directly in the torso by a tank shell. Cool. Coming, coming third on my team now. And holy shit! Holy shit! You mad? I don't know if that guy. I don't know if you guys watching can can actually read chat, but oh, I can't even believe how mad that guy is. I mean, I'm getting my ass handed to me, and I'm not even mad. I don't even care. I don't even care. Alright, we kept this point. So we can engage this tank. My totes missed. It's going a little bit faster than anticipated. Alright, we can go this time. Get jumping small shot. It's the only way to fly. Pro tip, these staircases don't tend to get destroyed, so uh, if you chill out in the staircase, you're going to be nice and safe. That wall can apparently get destroyed on this one, and I, that was, that was faulty advice. Wow, I, uh, don't, don't listen to a thing I say, holy shit. I've always felt super safe in those staircases from tank shells, and I, I guess it was a lie, because so many times I've seen uh, those buildings blown to shit, but the staircase still has a back wall, and is all nice and protected. I guess, uh, I guess not that time. I'm coming second on my team now. Which is, um, kind of depressing, you know, for the rest of my team. Attack this objective. So this is, uh, this is just kind of an average day for me, an average game. I notice when I'm actually playing with my buddies, I tend to get in less games like this. But it's not because me and my buddies are such a pro team that we just influence every game to be a victory for us. It's more so just that those guys don't have my horrendous bad luck of, of always being in a game where they're getting shat on. I think. Holy. R really? Kill assist 90. That was some kind of fail. I mean, my aim was kind of jittering all over the place, but I really don't have an excuse for that now. I thought I had that guy, but nope. Nope, not JPEG. You, you can't win them all, TTC. And I'm sure this is, uh,. This is probably the most pro gameplay any of you have ever seen from any kind of YouTube commentator in any game ever. You'll notice... I was looking at the scoreboard there where I was getting shot because I wasn't expecting him to be that far... Oh, he was just kind of chilling. It wouldn't have mattered if I'd been looking at the scoreboard or not because I wasn't expecting somebody to be in that corner. You'll notice, uh, if you look at the ratios, if you can read the scoreboard, that holy fuck... Also, if you look at the ranks, basically teams are... Not stacked in terms of numbers, but in terms of player skill. And uh, this happens a lot, and I read a, a good theory as to why this happens. Uh, apparently I'm just going to spawn with somebody behind me. Cool. Um, I read a good theory as to why this happens that isn't there is some kind of conspiracy between all the massive epic nerd pro players of massive pro-ness. Um, which, which was my theory, was that there was some kind of, of conspiracy that I just wasn't in on. Uh, no, the theory was, basically what happens is, people from the losing team rage quit and, uh, and go to different servers and then more more bad dudes come in, but the dudes on the winning team forever stay where they are. Or rather, sorry, good players on the losing team rage quit because they don't want to play with bad teams. 
and then uh, it just slowly fills up with players who are not that good until you reach some kind of a uh, state where just one team is her horrifically getting gang wrecked forever. Which would mean you could actually, if you were on a balanced server, you could actually predict if that is correct, which it, it would sort of make sense. You could actually predict which team was going to end up being the one getting horrendously raped in a few rounds. And make sure you're on the other team. I, I don't even know. I, I have a sense of, of honor, and I tend to stay for full rounds, even if my team's losing really badly, and, uh, and then leave the server. And also, I don't switch to the winning team from the losing team. That is, to me, that is just completely not an okay thing to do. It's just not cool. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as always, let me know what you thought of the video. I realized the gameplay here was not exactly pro. What did I go in that? 4 for 10 or something? I, uh, I had a few really... 4 for 11. Leet. Anyway, that is a good loadout for that gun. I just uh, happened to be in, in a server where victory was going to be impossible. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, Trouble T Cat out.